Yes, my name is Fern Cloud. I was born on the Sisseton, Wapton, Dakota uh, Reservation in northeastern South Dakota. In my formative years, my mother was definitely the person who really helped me, shape me, I suppose, uh, to who I am today. So her foundation for me was don't lie, uh, don't steal, don't swear, and um, never get on welfare. I got to meet uh, all my relatives on, on my mother's side who were Presbyterian ministry in the ministry themselves. But in 1978, I was giving birth to my youngest daughter, and we there was, it was just uh, complications, and, and I had to pray, and I asked God to, uh, uh, I don't let us die, and I'll do anything for you. And that was the first time I ever acknowledged there was a God. And uh, my life turned around from that I wanted to be a good person, and and eventually that led me to um, study the Bible and learn more about about Christianity and not so much the doctrines, but uh, the, what the Bible had to say. So I went to Bible college. Most of my life has been um, in a lay ministry, just working mostly with street people and um, you know young people. I didn't really become a, a Presbyterian until um, 2000. I mean, I was non-denominational before that. I was called by the Upper Sioux community in Granite Falls, Minnesota. They called me and asked me if um, I would be their pastor because the um, tribal vice chair uh, person, I had worked with her and uh, she really liked the way that I, uh, my, my experiential, uh, life in, in terms of balancing my culture and traditions with my Christian faith. So I came on board and I felt it was God because, you know, it, I didn't pursue it, it just came to me. So I just learned the first five years, I, ju I just was a pastor learning, um, just taking it one day at a time. <laughs> the joys. Um, that I have as being a pastor of Pishutta Zizi um, Presbyterian Church on the Upper Sioux Reservation. Uh, I think it's uh, being able to uh, bring the gospel message in Native context and being able to have the freedom to um, minister in my language and sing in our, in our language. It just makes total sense that that's the way God would have it. And also, too, as I become more and more visible within our church, uh, our, then our, our presbytery, of course, recognized my uh, skills. They've been, you know, adding more and more responsibilities within the presbytery and, and, and the Senate and GA. So, you know, I, I've really become a, a real active uh, part, part of the whole PCUSA's hierarchy of administrations. Nobody likes to do funerals. <laughs> yeah, really, no, that's the only challenge, that, that's the only part that I, I really struggle with. It, it's just a, a tough piece of life for Native people because it, it's just so, so, uh, so part of their lives. It's just like lo loss after loss after loss. And, the whole concept of the learning camp um, was uh, built on respect. Uh, we've been partnering with uh, Baltimore, Maryland, Brown Memorial for I think the three years now. And they come and they um, uh, they don't bring vacation Bible school in in the old old school sense of you know we come to bring Jesus to you and you know that that's been a very painful experience for for one of many of the older people. So uh, we looked at that and we decided that we needed to do something new in partnerships for our youth. And so they're, they're loving Christians who come and by their actions, they display um, the gospel message and love of Christ uh, as they um, help our students prepare for school with their academics. And I've gone to the big tent um, several years ago on, on missions and when does missions become toxic or making people dependent. And uh, in the years past, that's the way 
the Native American communities were, were looked at as, you know, um, we were just set up to be dependent. Our uh, community church members are actually the teachers and work alongside the learning camp. So, you know, it isn't like they're going to come and teach our kids. No, we're, we're right there with the, our people in Minnesota, the Dakota people in Minnesota, were the first contact with the, uh, the early uh, Presbyterian missionaries. John Williamson and, and the La Caparo uh, ministers, missionaries, they were very supportive in helping us to retain our language. They put together a dictionary and they allowed us to preach and sing in our language. They, they really um, were supportive uh, for keeping us as, uh, as much in our culture and but bringing the gospel message just to make our culture even better, you know. I am actually a great great granddaughter of the Kauyate uh, Duta or Little Crow, and he he was the chief of the Dakota people that actually allowed the uh, Presbyterians Williamson and Stephen Riggs to come in, build a school, and a church. My great great grandmothers they were the first students, and uh, they were the first um, congregation. Um, so, you know, I, I'm very much connected, and I, I don't think it's an accident or a coincidence that, you know, my journey has brought me back to Minnesota. So many of my our, our people were told they couldn't be Christian and, and Indian. They had to choose. That's why I went to, to call Bible college. That's why I studied the Bible, so I could make sense of how can I be a Native person and a Christian. The Native people are really a vital part in the, in the body of Christ, especially because America is our homeland. Uh, the Creator put us here as stewards of this land. So I'm really excited that you know the Native people are becoming more visible and a voice, a valued voice within the PCUSA.